Okay, we're going to replace some brakes on a 95 F-150. So we got the tires popped off here. And first thing you're going to do is you need to get these brake calipers off. So right on the back side of the brake caliper, you're going to see two bolts, one at the top and one near the bottom. And these are half inch heads. And for the purposes of movie magic, I already have them done. So I'm going to pull those out. And then you need to get the caliper off itself. So we have our bolts undone. And then to get your calipers off, just use a nice short pry bar. Just put it right inside the caliper there. And you can get the bottom end, and then you can get the top end, and work that off. Set this off to the side, hang it up on your radius arm there, so that it's not hanging from the brake line. You don't ever want to hang calipers from brake lines. And then your brake pads will come out, and probably your brackets also. You're gonna get new. You're gonna get new brackets with your new brakes, so that's not a big deal if that pops off of there. Now, we also need to, anytime you replace your brake pads, you need to have your rotors turned. So now, the more important thing we're gonna do is cover how to separate the rotor from the hub assembly. So first, we gotta take our four-wheel drive hub apart um, if you have four-wheel drive. So, I got some screws here. They are T25, so I'm gonna pop those off. Now I am going to include how to take this four wheel drive hub apart because this is the factory um, automatic hub. Most likely you may have an aftermarket worn hub assembly and so this process may, may vary slightly from what you're gonna see here. Um, you may have a different, uh, different procedure once you pop this cap off. But again, I'm gonna cover this since it is factory. In here, once you remove that cap, it's gonna be some pieces that are probably loose here. Um, go ahead and pop this off, set this off to the side. This is gonna pop off. You got your seal here, your little rubber seal. And now right here, this clip here is a retainer. This will just slide off. And when you remove that, you'll notice the, there's two little arms in there. Get some small pliers, squeeze these, try not to block the camera, squeeze these together, and then wiggle this assembly back and forth and that'll pop out. Now you see what that is, that's a retaining clip. So when you put this back together, you're gonna squeeze these together and get them down inside that groove for reassembly. Okay, so now that we got the body of the four-wheel drive hub out, the next thing is, is when you look inside there, and it's going to be hard to show on the camera, but there is a, um, kind of a little lock ring that sits in a groove back in here. That's the very first thing that needs to come out now. And if you look in here and feel along the groove, you'll see an opening in it. Find that opening and push up on it. It's kind of spinning around, and that'll pop the ring up. And I hope you can see that. So you see the rings popped up there a little bit, and all I'm gonna do is get pliers in there and pull that off. So there's what that looks like. And again, that just locks everything else in, so that'll be the first piece to come off. Set that off to the side. And then, you're just gonna reach in there with, then you're gonna reach in there with your fingers and line up this next washer hard to do one-handed. I'm gonna get this off and then I'll show you what it looks like. So now this splined washer is giving me a little bit of a trouble coming off so I'm gonna show you how I'm doing this. I'm working it off with one finger on one side and using the jaw of the other to pull on it. And so that's what that looks like. So you see how that goes on there. It lines up with the splines and gets pressed on. And we're stacking everything up in the order we're taking it off so that when we go to put it back together, we know the order everything goes back on. After that, you'll have a flat washer. So we'll put that in our pile. And now we're down to the axle nuts. So, as a young poor man, we would take flathead screwdrivers and hammers and beat them off. That is not the preferred method. You want to get the actual four-wheel drive lock nut socket set for the proper socket. The set I have is the OTC 4543 Alpha. 
if you work on a lot of vehicles you might want to buy the set instead of just buying the one you need so now I ended up using the internal one they both fit on there so it's really your choice I just think this gets a better bite and has less chance of slipping versus these little teeth so we'll work that off and then again set that in your pile so once you have that first nut off then we're gonna reach in there with the pliers and pull off our washer and you'll take notice that this has a spot here that goes in the groove of the axle. So that'll only go on one way. Then you'll have your last axle nut in there to get off. And you see that's pretty well coming off by hand. That's the way that should be. When you put this first axle nut on there, you should be able to spin this wheel and still have free movement. You don't want this on there so tight that the wheel doesn't spin. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna snug it down and then back it off a quarter turn. So remember that for reinstallation, that very first axle nut that goes on, snug it down and then back it off a quarter turn and then spin this and you should have free movement. So now we're just gonna remove the second nut. Okay, so now that we have our second axle nut off, I wanna go over the difference between these two nuts and the washer. You're gonna notice one of these nuts has a dimple on it. This one right here has a little dimple that sticks out. This is the first one that goes on. The reason for that dimple is it then meets up with one of the holes in this washer. And because this washer fits in a groove in the axle, once this first nut is torqued down, Remember, we snug it down and then we back it off a quarter turn. We then put this washer on there. That prevents this nut from coming loose, from spinning loose. And then the second nut gets tightened up against it. So that's another safety mechanism to keep that first nut from, from backing off. So the one with the dimple goes on first, then the washer, then the second nut. So once we have those off, the hub assembly will then come right off. And we're going to have a bearing in there, so be careful that doesn't drop in the dirt like everything else. There we go. And then here's our bearing. And we're going to repack this bearing before we put this all back together. And I do have a video on how to do that. Um, so be sure to check that out if you're not sure how to go about this. And that backing, ugh, bearing repacking tool is only like $20. Okay, so here we have our hub assembly with our rotor off of our truck. Now, you do not need to replace this entire assembly. I'm going to show you how to separate the rotor from the hub assembly here so that if you're doing a brake job, you can have the rotor turned, which typically costs $10 to $15 versus however much it is to buy a new one. So all you need here is a sledgehammer and pick a lug nut to dedicate to the cause. And it may still be good when you're done. You might get lucky. But either way, pick a lug nut. So now what we have going on here is the rotor is held onto this hub assembly by these um, studs. And they get hammered out from the front and they'll come out the back here. So again, we're gonna put the lug nut on one of these studs so we don't mess up our threads. We don't wanna mushroom over the end of this either. And if you do mess these up, these are replaceable. Give it a couple taps. That'll drop out the bottom and move on to the next one. All you gotta do is screw it on there a few threads. Doesn't have to be all the way on. Just you know, make sure you have a few threads on there. You don't want to hammer on just one or two threads. Now Mine came right apart because I just got done doing a bunch of work to this truck uh, within the last year or two. If yours is seized together, fret not my friend, we are better than Campbell's because we have a soup even for that. All you're going to do is it definitely helps to use air tools here, but take an air ratchet or air uh, hammer I should say and hammer on this lip and that'll break this seal so you can separate these two parts. So once we have our hub assembly off, here's our rotor. We can now take this rotor down to the shop and get this turned and not spend the money buying a whole new one. Okay, so we got our rotors back from the shop. Now we're gonna go over putting them back together. Um, you can hit this with a, hit this surface here with a uh, 
wire wheel and it wouldn't hurt to put a little anti-seize on here so that this comes apart a little easier next time. So if you want to go ahead and you can, like I said, just give a little light coating of uh, anti-seize different areas. Like I said, mine's been taken apart before so mine's not bad at all. But again, that'll just help that break free the next time. So, flip your hub assembly upside down and then go ahead and line up the holes. And now, we're gonna drive these studs back down in there. So we'll go ahead and get these lined up. Okay, so to drive these studs back down in here, there's a couple different uh, choices. My personal weapon of choice is gonna be an air hammer with this snub tip. This works perfect for driving these down in there. So you just center this right on there, and we're just going to drive them right down in. So they're all driven down in there. And if you do have, now mine's on there nice and snug. If you do have just a tiny bit of play, you don't have to get too concerned about it. When you tighten down your lug nuts, everything's gonna be squished together as you torque these down. It's all gonna pull together. Um, but yes, yeah, so you'll be able to drive those down now. You should have them pretty close to seated. There shouldn't be big gaps back here. But again, if it's just a little hair gap, don't worry about that. But that's all there is to uh, getting these rotors separated from the hub assemblies. And um, replaced. Okay, so once we have our rotors back on here, uh, a couple other things you're going to want to take a look at before we start putting this back together. If you had any um, oil leaking from the back of your hub assembly, now's a good time to replace this bearing um, and any seals that may have been leaking. You're going to want to clean all this dirty grease out of here, get all new fresh grease put in there when you repack your bearing. Now I don't typically cover the reinstallation but I decided I will on this because there are a couple little things I came across on the other side that I should probably mention if you've never done this before. So I have my hub assembly slid on there. First thing I'm gonna do is slide my, got my bearing repacked there. I'm gonna slide the bearing, slide the bearing on there. Push that all the way in. Now I'm gonna go get all this grease off my hands and set the camera up and we're gonna go from here. Okay, so all the, all I've done so far is slid this hub assembly on here and put my new um, bearing in there. Now the other hub assembly slid all the way back against the backing plate nice and nice and easy. Um, this one here has got quite a bit of a gap. So you could put a 2x4 on here and lightly hit on this with a, a mini sledge to work it the rest of the way on, but you don't need to. When we put our first nut on here, that's going to drive this back on, so I'm going to show you that. Okay, so remember we have two different nuts and we have our washer with the holes in it. Find the nut that had that dimple on it we talked about. That's gonna go on first. And we're gonna start that by hand. Once we've got a few threads on there by hand, everything in the world, you always wanna thread on by hand a couple turns first before you go hitting it with any kind of tools. That way you don't cross thread anything or strip anything out. I actually have to push that on there a bit to get to the threads. There we go, I feel that started. So now I'm gonna work that on. And as I tighten this down, it's working the hub assembly all the way on there. It's driving it back against the backing plate and that seal on the spindle. So like I said, you don't have to hit on it if it doesn't go on there by hand. Okay, now I'm going to put this really tight and work it on there just by hand. And you see this doesn't hardly move? That's a bad thing. So again, we're going to snug down that first nut. Now we're going to back it off a quarter turn. There we go. So there's a quarter turn and give it a spin. That's still a little tighter than I like. I'm gonna come back a little bit more. Maybe another eighth of a turn. There we go. That's what I wanna see. I wanna see a little, little free play spin there. Wiggle it around, make sure you don't have any play. That's all nice and snug. So now comes our washer with the holes. And remember, it has this notch here that's gonna line up with a notch in the spindle. So 
So that is back against that first nut. Now I'm going to tighten this nut down. And this is going to get tightened down by hand up against that first nut. Okay, so once that's snug down, and make sure I still got my play, and I do, so we're good to continue on. So now the next thing we have is our other two washers. So next comes our small flat washer. Then we have our other small washer with the splines. It's going to get lined up on there. Now we have our little C-clip. Now the groove this goes in, I can't feel right now. This is something else I want to point out. You're going to have to pull out on this axle to expose that groove. Now, if you can't get a hold of here and pull it out, reach right back in here in this cavity behind here, right on the U-joints, and just press on the U-joints to pull this axle shaft out. This works in and out a little bit, so you might have to pull it out to get to that groove that this sits in. Now, this is a hard part if you've got big fingers. All right, so now it's fully in that groove. Now we're ready for our four-wheel drive hub assembly. So we have our hub assembly. We're going to line up and slide in there. And remember, we have this clip here. We're going to squeeze, squeeze this clip together. There we go. Sometimes that inner um, spline section is hard to line up, but squeeze that clip together and then just work this back and forth until it slides in. And once it slides in, there you go. You see that spring sprung apart and locked us in there. So now it's locked in there. So now we put on our retainer piece. And then we can put these other little pieces on that popped off. Our bearing cap goes in the center. If this ring came off, pop that back on. You have your rubber seal for the hub cap there. And now we're ready to put our cap back on. I gotta go get my screws. Okay, so we got all those in, and now we're just gonna snug them down. Do not go crazy on these. They don't have to be in there super tight, and you will snap the heads. They're pretty much very thin screws. So just gonna snug them down gently. And you always wanna go cross pattern. So this one, then over here, then here, like every other one. Um, so now after that, all we gotta do is put a C-clamp on our caliper here. We're gonna put an old pad in here and use a C-clamp to compress this piston back in. That way it'll fit over the new brake pads and the rotor. And then it's just a, you know, pop that back down in. Make sure you have your new clips in here and tighten down your, your two caliper bolts. After that, get in the truck, pump up your brakes, build up your pressure, check your reservoir, make sure the fluid's up to level. Um, and then it's always a good idea to take the truck for a test drive and make sure you didn't forget anything or mess anything up in your hubs and your four wheel drive still works. And then uh, you're done. That's all there is to it. So I really hope you found this video useful. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that now. Thanks for watching.